Hello and welcome back. We are continuing with our review of sinusoidal signals. And one fundamental fact about sinusoidal signals is that if you have signals of the same frequency, even if they have different amplitudes and different phases, but they, as long as they have the same frequency, you add them as many as you want, they can look shifted as much as you want, you end up with a sinusoidal signal of the same frequency. Again, if you have sinusoidal signals and you're adding them, as long as they have all the same frequency, it does not matter that they are phase shifted or that they have different amplitudes. You can always reduce the addition of those into a sinusoidal frequency of the same frequency with a particular amplitude and phase. And that's what this mathematical relationship is showing. So we have to show that that's the case. Let's, let's do it. So the summatory of AK cosine of omega zero. Notice we don't have omega K, T plus phase K, K one to N. So we are adding N signals. Again, important point here, we are not saying, oh, you add signals, sinusoidal signals, each one of which can have a different frequency. What is the output of that? Now, with that, you can pretty much construct any signal you want. Okay, you are getting close to a Fourier series expansion. That's not what this activity is about. What this activity is about is that if we have signals and all of them, the frequency does not change, have the same frequency, but each one of them is going to have a different amplitude and a different phase. What is the output? Well, we know something about the output. That is going to have... Number one is that it's sinusoidal. We know that the output is going to be sinusoidal. It's not going to have a different shape. And it's going to be a single sinusoid. So it's a simple sinusoid of the same frequency that you have here. And then, of course, it's going to have a particular phase. So you add a hundred signals. But they are sinusoidal. And all of them have the same frequency. What do you get at the output? A simple sinusoid of the same frequency with a particular amplitude and, and a particular phase. Now, if you add a hundred sinusoids with different frequencies, you can get anything at the output. I mean, not 100, 100,000, whatever. You, can, you add enough sinusoids, you can get a triangular signal at the output, you can get anything else, but not a simple sinusoid, necessarily. If they have the same frequency, it's a simple sinusoid. Let's show it. Anytime that we are going to show anything, we are likely going to need to work with complex exponentials. Um, look at the previous video for an example of that. So, a... a K cosine of omega zero t plus phase k. If this is equal to, if we're going to use our complex exponentials, summatory, okay, and of the real part, right? The real operator, a k e to the j omega zero t plus the phase. Just watch the previous video if you have a question about this step. I'm talking about the previous video in this particular playlist. So this is equal, this is going to be equal to <clears throat> the real part of, we're going to add from k equals 1 to n, so we are adding n sinusoids, n can be any positive integer. So, a k, that means that each amplitude can be different. e to the j all I did was 
since Sumatra is a linear operator to take the real part out. Real. And now, this is a critical step, is when I'm going to separate using the properties of the exponential function a, k, e, and I'm going to bring the phase out, so really what I have here is a phasor. Notice, this is a, k, e to the phase, and then I have another component that does not depend on the summatory. This is key. Notice, this part, a, k, and the phase k does depend on this summatory, but this other does not have a k anywhere. It's not going to change. And so this, really, is the real part of this sum, which is a phase of sum, times the symmetry does not affect at all e to the j omega c to t because there is no k component and the output of this when you add you perform this phase addition is just a particular amplitude and a particular phase so you work that out you are adding complex numbers in polar form, what do you get? A particular number, a e to the j theta, that's all you get. Right? Notice this step is key. You add complex numbers and you get a complex number. So of a particular amplitude and a particular phase. And so this is equal to e to the j omega zero t. I'm going to put it back now. Amplitude plus a theta, which is equal to a times cosine of omega zero t plus theta. which is the result that we wanted. Now, in all the math, sometimes we get, can get lost as to what we were trying to do. <laughs> we were trying to show that if we have a sinusoidal signal of a particular frequency, and then we have another one of the same frequency, and then another one of the same frequency, and so we add many of them that they can have different amplitudes, different amplitude, different phase, we add them all, what we get is a simple, meaning a single sinusoid that has the same frequency and then a particular amplitude of a phase. Or that the sum of n or any number of sinusoidal signals with the same frequency results in a simple sinusoid, a cosine, uh, with a given amplitude and a phase. Now, what we did here to do this derivation was to put it in complex exponentials. Uh, that enables us to separate the, the, the frequency part that did not change, that was not dependent to k, and the phase. And eventually, a critical step was here when we arrived, where we were adding complex exponential numbers, I mean, we were adding num numbers, but this addition did not affect at all this other part here because omega zero was not omega k, did not depend on the summatory variable. And so when we added this, we got just a number, and then we can, a phasor, which is a complex number with an amplitude and a phase that we put back to get our final results. Our final result. Thank you.